Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to, to this presentation. Anna and I will be presenting today. Anna and I were already training uh, this training course uh, a couple of years ago now, Anna. Uh, so we already had the experience. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to offer you the chance, and it's not an obligation, it's only uh, the chance to turn on your cameras so I can see your faces, because that way I can see if I'm being very, very boring or if uh, I'm engaging you in, in the things that I'm saying. So if you want, and only if you want, don't feel uh, pushed to do that, uh, just turn on your camera so I can see your faces and I can read your expressions and those things, yeah? Um, okay, the presentation is going to be very simple. We're going to present uh, uh, what the opus are. We're going to be talking about questions and answers. We're going to be also introducing the training course that I told you about. Uh, and then we will try to have some time for your questions in case we didn't answer uh, them while we were presenting. We, we already prepared uh, several of them. Um, but if you have more questions, then feel free to um, raise the, your hand and, and ask them. Yeah. Uh, let me share the screen. This is this one here. And um, OK, um, present uh, 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 slideshow. OK. So uh, um, Raquel, uh, unfortunately, as uh, um, uh, Angels said, she couldn't make it today. Uh, she's not she's not feeling well. Uh, but as she said, you can see uh, who Raquel is by seeing the capsule that she shared for for this conference for this convention, and uh, you will see that she's amazing. Yeah. Then we have Anna. Uh, Anna, she's an expert in literature. She's a secondary school teacher. She has been teaching many years in, in, at the university level. Yeah. Uh, later, I will give the floor also to Anna to answer some of the questions because it will be a collaborative presentation be, between her and I uh, today. Um, the process of the Opus. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of you are aware that uh, the Opus might be changing for the next edition, but so far nothing has been officially published. It seems that, for example, uh, some of the parts that were eliminatory won't be eliminatory. You will be able to do all the exams, even if you don't do it very well in the first one. Up to now, it wasn't like that. Up to now, if you didn't do it well at the beginning, you were kicked out. You couldn't do the other two uh, tests uh, where you could maybe excel and, and uh, show the board that you were very good. Uh, that takes a little bit of pressure out of, this, of the process, uh, but still, it's a, it's a difficult one. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to present now is the process that has been the official uh, process up to the to now, okay? Uh, this might change. It might change the order. The practical case might disappear, but we don't know it for sure. So we have to present the last official call for, for autos, yeah? The first part was the defense of the plan. You had to plan uh, a whole year of one of the um, primary or secondary levels. Uh, this presentation is going to be more for oriented towards secondary because the course that we are launching next week, it's for secondary, but we are also planning on launching another course for primary and the system is the same, okay? So you can follow the, the presentation equally the same. The, the, the questions are the same. Uh, the answers are the same for primary and, and secondary. And if you are from primary and you have questions, you can also ask them, yeah? I also train the Opus for primary, so I, I will answer them. Uh, the plan that you have to prepare, it's a plan that uh, contains six units for the whole year. Uh, and um, of course, before that, a general part where you explain a little bit the essence of your plan and the methodology and how you use uh, technology and um, how your uh, plan is related to the curriculum and inclusion and all those things. Yeah. Then the six units, uh, there's a maximum number of pages. Two years ago, it was 60 pages. Last year in primary, they increase that to 70. Uh, it, it also tells you what font you have to use. Usually it's Arial uh, 12, uh, except in tables that you can use Arial 9. But in the last edition in primary, it was Arial 11 instead of 12. So uh, more pages and uh, more space because the, the font was smaller. Um, Two years ago, if you didn't pass the plan, I, I'm going to insist on this, you were kicked out. You couldn't 
defend the topics or the practical case. Yeah. So you had to do it very well. You had to prepare a very nice plan and you had to prepare a very good presentation. The presentation uh, in front of the board was a 35 minute defense. The first 10 minutes were supposed to be invested in presenting the general part of your plan. Uh, the following 15 minutes, you had to defend one of the six units out of three. Uh, you, you could choose out of three random um, uh, units from your plan. Um, so three came out. Um, sometimes they did it with a, with a phone. Sometimes they did it with uh, bingo balls. Uh, so out of those three, you had to defend one of them. And then there were 10 more minutes that the board could ask you questions. Yeah? Um, after that, the grades were published uh, in the, uh, how, was, how was it called? Uh, del Candidat, el Raco del Candidat, no. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's a web page where you can check your results and, and you can see if you passed or you didn't pass. If you didn't pass, you can uh, raise a, a complaint to the board, and usually the answer is, I'm sorry, this is the grade that you have. Um, you don't usually get any explanation of you should do this better or you should change this. Uh, they say that that's not their job. Their job is to say who's uh, suitable for the position and who's not. But you have the right to raise the complaint. Uh, if you pass that part, then you go to the second part, which is divided in two different parts. You have the practical case, which is 70% of this part. It's more important than the topics, but the topics are also important, especially because in the practical case, there were two questions that were related to the topics. You know that in secondary uh, opus, there are 69 topics. That's really tough. It, there's a lot of information that you have to understand and remember. Um, in primary, it's a bit easier in that sense. There are 25. So um, the chances are, are better in, in the case of primary. In the practical case, they present you uh, a situation where uh, they describe a, a school and a, and a group of students and the families usually of those students. They tell you how the school works. They usually give you a glimpse of how the school works. For example, if they work through projects and then, or, or they have European projects or whatever, whatever they are doing. And then they ask you to um, plan uh, one session inside that project, for example. Uh, saying where you place it regarding the other the, the rest of the of the unit, then they ask you to include the objectives, the aims that you have in that session, uh, and then you have to include also in the, in a third question the assessment. And after that, you two years ago you had two questions that were related to the theory related to those topics. Yeah, um, when you finish this practical case, you have three hours to to answer it. Then uh, you go rest because later in the afternoon and the evening, you have the topics. Um, out of 69, uh, they gave you five choices. Uh, if you are in primary, out of 25, they're going to give you three choices. And you have to choose one of those and write for two hours uh, as much as you know about, about that topic. Uh, in the case of the practical case, you will have to go and read uh, the part of the theory. Uh, the topics, uh, they didn't make you read this last edition. Yeah, In primary, in the practical case, uh, it was planned to include also the theory questions, but the, um, the unions complained about them and the department took them out. And therefore, in primary, there are only three questions in the practical case, which are the uh, session, the objectives, and the uh, assessment, assessment criteria, assessment tools. Uh, I insist that there are rumors that maybe there won't be any practical case anymore. There will be only the defense and the topics, and it won't it won't be eliminatory. Uh, it will be an average of both grades, so you will do both parts. Yeah. Um, then uh, let me let me present the the opus course, and then let's go to the questions. We're starting next week, next Saturday. It's going to be on Saturdays. Uh, for four hours, and there will be a moment when we work on the plans that will be sessions. Sessions will be a bit longer. Will be five hours. Um, the course uh, it's practical because it, uh, we're going to be 
asking you to do uh, things, to prepare things. Uh, it's going to be collaborative because you're going to be uh, preparing those things in groups so you can uh, learn from each other, social constru uh, constructivism. Uh, we will provide to you example of the main topics. We have divided the, the uh, 69 topics of secondary in three blocks, and we will give you examples of the main topics of those three blocks so you can uh, use that uh, in any of the, of the topics inside that block or in most of the topics inside that block because it's a more general topic that uh, it, it's like the umbrella where all the other topics are hanging from. Yeah? Uh, then uh, there will be the development of, of some of the topics that will be done by you. You will prepare it and uh, then you will do the presentations. That way, uh, not only you will have that umbrella that will cover uh, any topic, you will also have examples that you and your colleagues have prepared uh, to have an index of, of uh, um, the important things in the, in the topics, to have an example of a practical case and the possible questions that could go related to, to the practical case. And you would also have, um, what am I forgetting? Ah, an example, a, a short mini plan. So you can see uh, an example of how you can include that topic inside a plan. Yeah. Uh, then uh, there are going to be there's going to be some guidance for the plans and the practical cases that we will do uh, when when we have finished all the all the theories because in the practical cases we have to include theory then it's better that you that you have already learned a bit of it yeah? uh, what the course is not and I want to be very clear about this uh, the the course uh, is not a place where you will receive the written theory topics. There's no official written theory topic. It doesn't exist. There are publishers that have published their own, but it's their view of that topic. Uh, it, there's no official um, temari. Uh, the only thing that is official is the title of the topic, the 69 tit titles of secondary, the, the, the 25 topics in, in primary. Uh, so we're not going to, give, to provide you that. We might link inside the Moodle area that we have, we might link uh, some online uh, topics that can be found, yeah? But it's, they are not ours and uh, we're not judging if they're good or they are not good. They're just there and you can check them to compare with what you have already prepared and found. It won't be individual tutoring. It's just a guidance, yeah? Uh, it's going to be a 50 hour course uh, in 50 hours, uh, there's no time for individual tutoring. Yeah, It's more for giving you a bit of support to solve some doubts about the process, to help you out, uh, uh, structure your time, uh, etc. But it's not going to be individual tutoring, um, especially because the price also is not, is not uh, as expensive as the normal Opus training courses. Now I'll show you the prices. Now you will see it's, it's a good offer. Uh, we won't be correcting the plans. We will be checking them with you. Uh, there will be a moment in the course where we will uh, be in the Zoom in, in, in breakout rooms, and you will be individually showing one of the trainers uh, the, the plan that you have created, and the trainer will give you feedback and will, will say, oh, you should change this, be careful with the language, but it won't be a thorough correction of the plans because of what I said, because of the length of the course and the price. Yeah. Um, this is the distribution. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link now through the chat. Well, in fact, I can send it to you right now. Uh, um, I'm going to, to send you the link to this document here. Let me see if I can show it to you. Uh, do you see ACE, the secondary of Opus with a pack? Yes? Yes, okay. we do. <laughs> now I only need to see the chat. I have it here. And OK, I'm sharing uh, a link to this document. You will be able to open it and view it and uh, read it uh, carefully. Here you have everything explained, the content, the topics, the plans. It's very similar to primary. Uh, it's, not, it's not the same, but it's very similar to primary. And here you have uh, uh, at the top overview of the sessions. Here is the uh, planned uh, calendar. It, it's subject to changes. Uh, it might vary a little bit. Uh, we, have, we might have to move some sessions, but uh, um, the idea is to, to, to follow that 
that calendar. Yeah. Uh, at the end, you also have some questions and answers that are important. Yeah. For example, one, the first one is, is there a minimum number of students to launch the course? Yeah, we need 10. If we don't get to 10, uh, then a pack cannot afford to launch the course. Yeah. Remember that this is a training course that is an APAC training course. Yeah. And the idea is that the benefits from the training course will go to the association so uh, APAC can continue creating things, uh, hiring people to do uh, training videos, etc. Yeah. Then, um, well, I'm going to go back to the presentation. You can read this at any time. You don't need to read it now. Um, let me go back to the presentation. It was here. Uh, uh, and slideshow. I'm trying to run a little bit because I know the time is limited. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to try to go very fast. Uh, the important information, well, a PAC members, uh, those of you who are PAC members, it's only 450 for a more than 50 hours training course. So I think it's good money for the uh, good value for the for the product. Non-members is 550. The membership is 70 euros. So it's really recommendable for you to sign up to a pack, become a member. Because 42, you're a 42, not 72. <laughs> how, how much, Angels? It's only 42. 42, I thought it was 70. That was years no, ago? No, it's oh. past 10 years. Okay, okay. Uh, um, first mistake in my life, sorry about that. So it's only 42 euros. So, uh, um, I mean, it's a win-win. You become a member of the association and then you also uh, have a great discount on here. Uh, and something important and that has been asked before, and I'm going to insist on this, the sessions will not be recorded. If you miss one session, you will, you will receive the materials that we use in that session, but you won't be able to see the session. And I'm, I want to explain why. I've been training uh, for people, for oposiciones, for about 15 years now. Um, and unfortunately, I have found the materials that I have created for preparing people uh, in colleagues that had never trained with me before. Yeah. So if people are passing um, mind maps or, or topics that some of the people create, imagine if, you, if, if uh, we shared the videos. They would be probably published and, and shared all around the internet. And, uh, well, it's, it's harmful for, for us yeah? that we invest a lot of effort in preparing these sessions. And, uh, and well, uh, it's uh, one way that we have to earn a bit more of money uh, outside of, uh, of the school and the high school, yeah? Uh, then, uh, now we're going to go to the questions and answers. Uh, some possible questions that we thought about, and Anna and I will be answering this, yeah? Um, first question or first set of questions. Which key concepts do I need to know before making the presentation? How should I structure it? Do I have to include really innovative methodologies? Anna. Well, the key concepts that we thought about are really the ones uh, published by the Departamento de Educación de la Generalitat, which, you know, are the curricular content, materials and resources, methodology, diversity, including gender and support measures, and assessment. Um, so you need to make sure that all those aspects are there in the presentation and that you know what to say about each of these aspects. So I would make like an outline at home, like in one page, you can have three words of every aspect. For example, I don't know, materials and resources. They should be varied and personalized. Uh, methodology, you, sh you should talk about patterns of interaction, talk about content and form. And if you would be dealing first with content and then with form or the other way, um, you could talk about creativity, critical thinking skills. So write this down so that when you are in front of the members of the, of the, of the jury and you are nervous, you, you know um, what you have to say. Um, then, for, for example, when you talk about diversity, you could mention f flexibility and talk about different learning styles, analytical, experiential, perceptive channels, levels of difficulty. So write, write that down and memorize it because it's not, there are not many things, you know, that you have to know. It's everything interrelated in the three parts of the opus. So if you have everything clear, you will know how to adapt it to whichever situation you have to defend um, that in the practical case or in the, in the presentation or in the topics. 
Um, and in the assessment, make sure that you include self-reflective, assessment, formative, and summative. Um, and then, well, really innovative methodologies that the department um, suggests or recommends using the, the commu uh, communicative-based approach. So I think that if you use that, you're safe. And then uh, you can also mention task-based approach and content-rich based uh, uh, content-rich uh, language learning because they also mention it in the in the orientations. So I think that if you mention that, you are safe. If you know more, so much the better. But then you need to know again the key concepts of all these methodologies. Communicative approach it needs to have a, a clear communicative purpose, and students need to be exposed to and produce language which is. Um, related to the real world and produce realistic tasks. Um, in the task-based approach, basically students repeat the same tasks, first uh, with the language that they have at, at their disposal, and then after having interacted with a teacher, with each other, and having perhaps analyzed the language, they do the task again, they report it back to the, to the rest of the class, and they do it much better. So it's based uh, on the on, on the principle of repetition, the task-based approach. And then the content-rich language learning is using um, content which is interesting, um, perhaps even aesthetically uh, pleasant, pleasant, like poetry or literature, and also emotionally in, in intensive, yeah? because these appeal to the person globally. Um, so they are exposed to rich, authentic input, and then, well, um, there are many things, but uh, would you like to add something, Edward? Because... Yeah, uh, well, uh, one of the things I, I, we're going to insist a lot in, in today's talk and in the training course is that uh, one of the things that you have to know by heart is the assessment criteria of the opus. Yes. You need to learn that by heart. You need to know what the board is expecting you to say, because if you know what they are expecting you to say and you say it, you know that they're going to put a tick wherever they have to put the tick. And the more ticks you have, the higher your grade is going to be. Uh, they, this assessment criteria are published some weeks before the first exam, and uh, you should have that document that you can find in the in the webpage that I told you before that I cannot remember. Uh, Portal, del, Portal del Candidat, I think it's called. Uh, you can find the document there. And those assessment criteria guide you in what things you have to say and you have to include. Usually, these assessment criteria arrive a bit late for changing your written document. Your re written document, by the time that this assessment criteria have been published, will already be finished probably and printed. Uh, and if not, you won't have much time to change it. But that doesn't mean that you cannot answer all the things that they are expect expecting to you to say, even if you didn't include those things in your plan. If they're not in your plan, but you say them out loud, usually that's mm -hmm. valued. There are some boards that don't, but it's usually valued. Yeah. Then um, how to structure the presentation, the defense of your plan or, or the writing, well, uh, following following this assessment criteria, you don't have to follow them in order. You have to find the order that you personally find coherent related to your plan or related to how you explain things. But be sure that you're answering everything inside the assessment criteria. That's the secret. That's that's the difference between getting a 10 or, or even failing. And do I have to include really innovative methodologies? Well, uh, that depends a lot on how much you know. Uh, if you don't know much about Flip Classroom and you include it, and you don't include it well, and in the board there's someone that knows how Flip Classroom works, then it's going to be negative for you. Um, if you know a lot about a theory, um, let's say, for example, learning communities. You know a lot about the theory behind the learning communities. Uh, you can apply it, but you have to be careful and present it in a way that is understandable for the board because some of these innovative methodologies are new for them. Maybe they haven't heard about them. And, uh, well, you know, in English, we always say, kiss, keep it silly simple. In the opposite, it's also the same. You have to explain things like if you were teaching them. You don't need to make them participate. You need to help them understand what you're explaining. You have to be teaching them about your plan. Yeah, Those are the things that I would add, Anna. 
and perhaps also use some technical words instead of saying if you want to, students to read um, you can make the, the, the difference between scan a text or skim or, or read um, you're looking you know for detail so be as precise as possible with, a, with your language so that they know that you know you know all the um, pedagogical um, for example in inclusion when you're talking mm. about inclusion, you have to talk about universal measures, additional mm. measures, and uh, intensive measures. Mm. You have to show that you know uh, how that works and that you're applying it well. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to use the jargon uh, mm. of our field. Mm. Scaffolding, uh, there are many words that, yeah. you know. And not only that, collocations. I, I always say this in my training. I see Ramona here. Ramona has trained with me. And I don't know if there are more people that I trained in the past. Um, I always insist uh, there are certain things that we say in a certain order. We don't say reading, listening, speaking. No, no. We say listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And that's a collocation in our field. If you say it in a different way, the board might perceive that you're not a professional teacher, that you haven't invested too much time in preparing yourself. So be careful with those things. Yeah. The more you know, the better. Yeah, as long as you can transmit it. Uh, I'm going to pass to the next one because we are uh, running out of time. We only have 20, 20 minutes left. So we're going to try to go fast. Which key concepts? No, this is the same. Uh, should I find a study group or is it better to prepare it on my own? It depends a lot on the kind of, of uh, learner that you, uh, you are. If you are a social learner, a, a study group can help you. Um, the problem is that probably the people that you know are from around the same area where you live, and then they're going to be competitors in the same process because they might end up going to the same board that you're going. So this is a bit tricky. Um, in the training courses, for example, uh, in, in the one of APAC, yeah, you will coincide with people from the same area, but you will also coincide with people from other areas in Catalonia that in reality you're not competing against uh, because you're not going to be in the same board. And usually, um, the, the boards uh, have a certain number of people that can pass, so not more people pass than the available seats. Yeah, Anna, would you like to add anything else about this? No, okay. What part is more important? Where should I put most of my effort? Well, if it's eliminatory, that's clear. The most important part is the first part prepare the first part better because, um, usually the instructions, uh, although nobody says it. And uh, the instructions is to kick out a certain number of or a certain percent, percentage of people in the first part, uh, not to have too many in the second part. Um, if the first part is the plan, you have to prepare a very nice document and prepare a very appealing and engaging presentation. So the board will have to be listening to you because they, they're really interested in, what, interested in what you're saying. Yeah. If it's not, uh, not eliminatory, um, a good basis of uh, the, the topics will help you in reality uh, have stronger uh, practical cases and stronger plans because you're going to be applying the theory, especially if you are very good at those topics inside the theory that talk about uh, language teaching. Yeah, those for me are, are essential. Anna? Uh, you but you need to, to know a little bit of everything. So don't spend um, all the time that you have just studying what you like. Try to know what what's important, and 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 study everything, and not just you know what you what you really like. That's why uh, the way that we approach in the training course in secondary is to create this index of of the different topics, so you get used to have that index, and then you only need to convert that index into a text. Yeah, so you you have the important things that you have to say about each topic, and then you can present it uh, or, or write it. Yeah. How can I control my nerves? How can I give a good impression? Anna, would you like to well, answer this one? Well, prepare yourself as well as possible with the assessment criteria. There you have everything. And um, you could like make a grid and tick um, everything that you already know. And then if you know that you know it, you should not uh, worry about it. And if there's something that you don't know, then you can prepare it and, and be calm. Um, and then you will give a you will give a good impression. So basically, it's go through the assessment criteria. I sent you the link to the assessment criteria of the last edition, and everything is there really. Um, mm -hmm. 
Apart from and rehearse you... and rehearse at home also yeah, the, the presentation important, yeah. at least once. Yeah. I remember that. Somebody. I remember that the first time I, I went to Opus uh, in primary that was uh, in two thousand and five. It has rained a lot. Uh, I, I the first time I, I prepared I, I uh, prepared my or rehearsed my my presentation. It took me like fifteen minutes more than the limit uh, that I had for for the defense, and I had to rehearse it like seven or, or 10 times to to do it uh, below the, the maximum time yeah so rehearsal rehearsal is is essential another tiny trick and this comes from from neurolinguistic programming uh, is uh, taking taking profit of us being animals and one of the things that the animals do for generating certain substances that will help them in certain situations is uh, make themselves big uh, so before before you present, uh, if you are closed in a room or in the toilet, spend five minutes making yourself as big as possible. Yeah, uh, um, stand on your on your toes uh, and and make yourself as big as possible because your brain will be generating some um, endorphins and dopamine that are going to help you be more self confident and show that you're self more self confident than in reality you are because we are all nervous and and don't forget this everybody. Everybody is nervous before their presentation. The person that is not nervous probably is because they didn't prepare too much and they don't have much to lose. Yeah, but the people that invested time, they're going to be nervous. Everybody's uh, uh, going to have uh, the same feeling. And about the good impression, I would add one more thing to what Anna said. Remember that they're hunting for teachers. They're looking for teachers. They are going to give you a full-time position for the rest of your life as a teacher. So you have to show them that you're a teacher. If they see you like a teacher, then you have more chances. Then if, if uh, you sound very uh, knowledgeable, but uh, they cannot see you in that role of teaching uh, kids or teenagers. So being assertive and enthusiastic as well, I think, um, because if you believe in what you do, probably your students also will have more chances of believing or of wanting to learn. So being sounding perhaps not over enthusiastic but yeah True. enthusiastic enough yeah uh, sometimes the board uh, um, will will criticize some of the things that you said and you might be very self confident and you you might know why you put it there and you might tell them oh yeah i put it because of this but you have to always acknowledge them because if not you sound over enthusiastic over self-confident yeah so you have to, to tell them something like well i put it here because of this but now that you mentioned this well I, I i didn't think about this i'm going to really um take it into account for my future teaching or whatever yeah uh, show them that you're listening to them uh, don't confront them uh, usually when there's a confrontation between the board and the candidate the one losing is the candidate so don't confront them even if if they are a bit rude sometimes they are yeah is it possible to pass the first time? Anna, is it possible to pass the first time? Yes. <laughs> you did, didn't you? Yeah. Raquel also passed. Uh, the other trainer also passed in the first there, time. Yeah? There were many places two years ago uh, also, and I think there are quite a few places now. No, no, it, it's, it, it's possible. It's not easy, but it's possible. Can I pass with no merits? Um, I think, Anna, you didn't have many merits. Well, I, I had no um, experience working at secondary level, mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't have many merits here. Mm -hmm. I had some. And Raquel barely had any, and then she passed. So. Mm -hmm. they, they, just... they, they allow you to choose the, the, the place um, where you will work, but they are not um, mm -hmm. a key into whether you pass, or you get a place or not. Not usually, not usually. Not there are usually. sometimes there are sometimes yeah. that more candidates than positions mm -hmm. uh, pass, and then the merits can play an important role. Mm -hmm. But don't get discouraged by that because no. people uh, with no merits and good grades have yeah. gotten a position. So, yeah. am I on time? Well, we don't know when the when the uh, opos are going to be. If they are in June, it's going to be very very tight. Probably it's not going to be in June because the theory says that when they publish the convocatoria. Uh, six months have to go by before the first exam. So probably it's not going to be yet. Uh, 
the lately the unions are saying that probably the exams will be in December. If the exams are in December and you start now, you have a good um, year, almost a full, a full year to prepare. Um, I usually recommend a whole year, but if not, if it's not possible, then nine months. Uh, I, I think it's the, the the right amount of time. Uh, cutting it shorter, it's going to make you feel much more stressed. Yeah. yeah. I'm very good with technologies. Uh, Sorry. I, Go ahead. Sorry, so there's a question in the chat about uh, Julia is asking if we offer any courses for EOI. And Not yet. No. <laughs> Not yet. We could we could try to organize something if we have people that are interested, but not yet. Um, well, uh, maybe um, Julia can send us an email and, and we can we, we can ponder and see what we could do. The only thing is that for preparing the, the course, we need experts that can teach it. And none of us here is an expert in AI. So none of us is ready to do that. I, I can do primary and I can do secondary, but I've never passed the AI once. So mm. I, I don't feel prepared to do that yet. Okay, thank you. I'm very good with technology. Should I bring an awesome digital presentation to my defense? Well, um, I, I, I'm techie myself. I love, love technology, but I'm going to recommend you not to bring uh, uh, digital presentations unless you're able to fit everything that you want to say in two screens, because in the last convocatory in primary, those were the instructions. Maximum two screens. So if you have a PowerPoint with animations, the first animation that appears, that's it. The screen changed. You cannot use any more digital presentations, yeah? You have to show them that you use technology. You have to show them that you use technology in the classroom, but unfortunately, they don't give you the chance to show it there. I think it's for saving time because if not, managing everything with the computers and everything was a bit too slow. Anna, would you like to add anything to this? Is there only one right answer to each question? No. Um, the question are generally, I think, related to everything that has been already mentioned, um, measures or, or, or diversity, activities, um, and as long as you can justify your choices, that's okay. So you need to make sure that you know why you're saying things. If, for example, students are working in groups um, and they ask you if they have roles or not, you need to, to, to be able to answer that. Um, so that's, that's my... Exactly. My opinion. And and if you don't use roles, but you explain it well, that's okay. And if you exactly. use roles uh, uh, and, and you explain exactly. it well, that's also okay. Exactly. Usually. Exactly. Except uh, there, there are cases. I mean, uh, one of the things that I always say in my training is this opus process is very unfair. It's subjective. And it will depend a lot on the people that you have in front, the board. And if they think that you're in the right line or not, you, you can justify very well, but if they really hate the methodology that you're applying and they don't believe in it, their opinion is probably going to be negative, no matter how well you, you defend it. Whilst if you had another board, maybe they would love it. So do not forget that this process is unfair and subjective. They, they, they try to make it as objective as possible, but it, it's, it's not, it's not at, least, at least not yet. Yeah, And some good teachers fail the opus. And they are very good teachers. And some people that are not very good teachers pass the opus. It's not a perfect system. yeah. And, and you have to be aware of that before you go there. Because if not, it's very frustrating, yeah. especially when you fail. When you pass, it's not that frustrating. <laughs> when you fail, it can be very frustrating. What kind of questions are generally asked? They could ask you almost anything, almost anything. Uh, they could ask you those questions after you do the presentation of your plan, and they could ask you the questions after you read the uh, practical case. And they could ask you almost anything. One thing that I would like to say here is, if they don't ask you questions, that's not bad or good. Mm -hmm. They just didn't ask you any questions. If they ask you five questions, and you know that to the rest of the board, they asked one or two, that's not bad and that's not good. In my case, last uh, last edition, I went to from primary to secondary uh, to this special opus, and uh, we were in a group of WhatsApp, 
Uh, and and that, that you're going to receive that offer to enter into the groups of WhatsApp. Be careful because in my in my group it didn't happen, but I know other groups where some candidates are playing mind tricks with the others, so so they get more nervous. So they they maybe they don't go the day of the exam because they are uh, too afraid or yeah. So be careful with the WhatsApp groups because they tend to play, play this kind of mind tricks. So they have been terrible with me, and maybe it was not true. Yeah. In my case, uh, a lot of people had presented before I did, and they said, no questions, one question, no questions, no questions, one question. And I went there, and they asked me three questions. And on my way back from Barcelona to Tarragona, where I live, on the bike, I was all the time thinking, shit. And I didn't answer, I didn't answer those questions very well. My mother was uh, in the intensive care unit. She, she was... Uh, very close to die. She didn't die in the end, but she was very close to die those days. It had been a, a month and a half that had been terrible for me. And, and I didn't answer those questions too well. Yeah. Uh, and I was coming back and I said, well, they asked three questions. I didn't ask, uh, answer well. The others only one question, zero questions. Uh, I'm, I failed. I failed. That's it. Okay. I failed. And no, I didn't fail. I was the highest grade in the, in the board. So you never know. Um, don't don't give anything for granted. No questions can be good or can be bad. Uh, the same as a lot of questions. Yeah. Is the language level that important, Anna? Yes, of course. Um, you need to be. You need to speak um, clearly. Um, you don't necessarily need to rush, but you need to you know um, use the precise vocabulary with no grammatical errors, good pronunciation. So the better you speak, the more chances you stand of passing. In secondary, it's less usual because in secondary, you're all philologists uh, or, or you have a degree on, or, of English and, and you have received a lot of training. In primary, it happens more that a lot of people are kicked out because of their command of the language. And it, it, it's like this, huh? You can be a fantastic teacher, but if your command of the language is low, they're not going to give you the position. It, it, it's, um, it might be tough, but it's like this. Uh, there was once some years ago uh, that there were 500 positions for primary English teachers. There were 700 and something candidates, only 250 passed. And when I talked to one friend that was a, a member of a board uh, and I said, what happened? Why only 250? And she said, Edward, we saw very good teachers, but their command of the language was so bad that we couldn't give them the position. We have to fail them. And they were fantastic teachers. And you could see that the, the activities were great. The, 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 the plan was well thought, but the command of the language was too bad. Yeah, We only have three minutes for crying out loud. Uh, oh, okay. We have this other thing that I want to show you. Uh, let me, uh, before the open question time, uh, we have this, let me uh, present and... Okay, if you go to menti.com and use the code that appears here, 9597458, you will be able to write three things that you think that could help a, can a candidate have more chances in the opus. And uh, I want you to, to write things that you think, not influenced by what we said, yeah, because we said a lot of things, but uh, things that you feel, that you think. And you can add them here and then we will have some ideas. Uh, we're not going to have time to share the ideas today because we only have two minutes left. So what, what I'm going to do, if that's okay, uh, is I'm going to uh, take those things that you write here and the things that I will show you in just a second. And uh, I, will, I will try to create a video that a pack will share, uh, maybe in a capaxel or something like that, talking about um, things that can help a candidate pass the opus. Yeah, uh, I said video, and then we have another person coming in. So please feel free to write down the, the things here. And uh, I'm going to, well, no, I'm, I'm not going to show you the other thing. The, 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 the next slide in the, in the in Mentimeter, it's the opinion of the, some of the, of the trainers of Opus uh, that work for APAC, and some board members from a pack from the from the association yeah uh, i asked them to share their thoughts about this and the trainers 
and some of the board members of, uh, of ATAC shared their thoughts over there. Uh, so once we have both things, I will create a video uh, giving you some thoughts about those important things and why they are important. Uh, now, do you have any questions that you would like to ask? Let me stop sharing the screen now. Do you have any questions that you would li like to ask? Um, there was one question in the chat. Sorry, it's me again. Uh, Kara was asking if you would recommend 100%, like going for 100% PBL, for example, or any methodology in particular. Well, um, nowadays, nowadays we are in the post method era. Uh, <laughs> we 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 know that the perfect method method doesn't exist. Um, so going only with a single method might be difficult, might be complicated. Um, we need to to take an eclectic approach in teaching and, and take good things from different methods, depending on the group that we have in front, depending on the kind of teachers that we are. Uh, PBL, it's fantastic. It's great. And, and a plan based on PBL has many chances to pass, uh, amongst other things, bec uh, because um, the department wants the plans to be cross-curricular and project-based based learning is cross-curricular. Uh, but I would, I would spice it up with more methods, not just only project-based uh, teaching. Do you agree, Anna? Generally, everything. I mean, there are many methodologies. Whether you want it or not, you end up um, combining things that, or, or different methodologies, use some some um, strategies, or you know that, that are similar in in all of them. So it's difficult to say, you know, if that is just one methodology, or if it has ingredients of different methodologies at the same time. I think mm -hmm. I don't know if I explained myself well. Well, there's another question. Um, I'm, I'm reading from the bottom, so maybe I skip some. Uh, uh, are, are you planning on doing the course again before the Opus, for example, in summer or in autumn? Well, we are we are starting now uh, for sure because uh, there's still a chance that they publish it for July. So we're we're going to start it now. Um, if in the end it's in December. We might consider doing it later, but uh, probably it would be after summer and it would, there wouldn't be enough time for doing a proper preparation. Yeah. Another question is about uh, preparing for OPOS now that is the first year that somebody's working or should uh, this person wait to get more experience. Uh, having experience in how the OPOS works is priceless, even if you fail. So my recommendation is always go for the Opus, try it. Uh, if you pass it, well, that's fantastic because you, you have solved your life. If you don't pass it, you have the experience of how the process works. And the next time you go, uh, you have more chances because you know how things go and you're less nervous in many, in many senses. So yeah, you should go for it. Yeah. And, you, and you will have already started writing the plan, which if you don't pass, will serve you, you know, it for the next edition. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's it. We are two minutes over the time. Sorry about that. We didn't want to keep you longer. Uh, if you have any more questions uh, or, well, we will answer a lot of this in the, in the training courses. Uh, if you don't come to, come to the training courses, well, wait for the video that we will publish about the things that you are sharing in, in Mentimeter. And, uh, to the following questions and answers that I'm sure that next uh, APAC com conference we will we'll do another one. Yeah. Anna, uh, anything else to add? No, perhaps that the, all the, in the, in the plan, all the units should have like a common thread, mm -hmm. not, necessar not necessarily methodological, but perhaps like some, you know, topic or something that values or content, you know, you should be able to, to justify the, um, not not only the cohesion within the the sequences, but also um, throughout the, the whole course plan. Or yeah, it, plan. It's essential. Hmm. It's essential. Okay, okay, so thank you. you very much. Thank you very much for being with us here this late on a on a Friday, uh, especially <laughs> these days that are so tough. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.